As astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin became the first humans to sit foot on the moon on July 20th, 1969, former President John F. Kennedy's pledge delivered eight years earlier in his infamous speech before Congress was finally coming to life. However, the last part of the assignment was yet to be fulfilled. The astronauts from NASA's Apollo 11 mission needed to get back home safely. The pressure was exorbitant as any malfunction as insignificant as it may be, could result in Armstrong and Aldrin getting stranded in outer space. Back on Earth, President Richard Nixon's staff asked his speechwriter to prepare a statement in case a catastrophe were to happen. William Sapphire quickly complied and ultimately delivered an emotional address that was aptly titled, In Event of Moon Disaster. The Age of Camelot on May 25, 1961, the youngest elected president in United States history, John F. Kennedy, attended a joint session of Congress and delivered a rousing speech calling for all Americans to unite in one common goal, to land an American on the moon. Quote, This nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. It was the beginning of Kennedy's presidency, also known as the Age of Camelot, and the American desire to find peace and avoid war was increasingly latent. However, that dream was short-lived, and in early 1962, Kennedy had to resist the failure of the CIA's Bay of Pigs invasion of Cuba. More importantly, Kennedy had to use every ounce of charisma he had to confront the Cuban Missile Crisis, which put the United States and the Soviet Union at the brink of war. And to make matters worse, the president also had to deal with the escalation of the conflict in Vietnam, where the communists were about to take over the country. Still, Kennedy was committed to achieving world peace and helping his country win the space race against the Soviets. On September 12, 1962, Kennedy once again addressed the American populace, quote, We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Despite all his efforts to support NASA by increasing its budget by almost 80% and proposing the Soviets a joint mission to the moon to ease the tensions of the Cold War, President Kennedy would not live to see his dream realized. After the president's assassination, the responsibility fell to Lyndon B. Johnson, followed by Richard Nixon. That historic day on July 20th, 1969, an anonymous citizen placed a bouquet of flowers on Kennedy's gravesite in Arlington with a note that read, quote, Mr. President, the eagle has landed. Apollo 11. The success of the Apollo 11 mission was Nixon's biggest triumph in a time of incessant chaos. The withdrawal of American troops from Vietnam, the escalation of peace protests in the U.S., and the Watergate scandal were all a heavy blow to a troubled presidency. However, Nixon fulfilled the promise Kennedy made to the Americans of landing not just one man on the moon, but several. All six American lunar touchdowns, from Apollo 11 in 1969 to Apollo 17 in 1972, occurred during Nixon's presidency. Still, these victories did not come without their set of risks, especially regarding Apollo 11. Before that mission was launched, NASA and the presidency were very concerned about it. And just as they expected, several minor mishaps had Houston on high alert. One of NASA's biggest concerns was missing the mark on touchdown, despite multiple alarms that signaled Armstrong and Aldrin that they were going off course and running out of gasoline. Although Houston was relieved when Armstrong announced that the Eagle had landed with just 30 seconds left of fuel, the mission was only halfway done. The men had to safely return to Earth now, and this was the hard part, as sensors indicated that there was a pressure buildup in the landing engine fuel line that could trigger a lethal explosion. Fortunately, the gas was released, and there was no explosion. Once the mission on the moon was over, and Aldrin and Armstrong got ready to come back home, a broken-off circuit breaker almost left the two men stranded in outer space, as the device was pivotal in igniting the ascent engine properly. After a night trying to find a solution with mission control, Aldrin was finally able to push the circuit back in place with a felt-tipped pen he was surprisingly carrying in his shoulder pocket. As minor inconveniences kept piling up, NASA and the presidency contemplated a worst-case scenario and started making the necessary preparations in case of a catastrophe. It would take two decades for a hidden Nixon speech about Apollo 11's potential failure to come out to the public. Sapphire's Call to Action One month before the launch of Apollo 11, Astronaut Frank Borman, the liaison to the White House, told senior speechwriter William Sapphire, quote, You want to be thinking of some alternative posture for the president in the event of mishaps. 
like what to do for the widows. Sapphire was later told by White House Chief of Staff H.R. Haldeman that he had to pen a presidential address in case Armstrong and Aldrin did not make it back safely. Inspired by several drafted speeches about the possible negative outcome of successful operations such as the landings of D-Day, Sapphire finished the speech on July 18, 1969. It was titled, In Event of Moon Disaster. The speech that no man surrounding the president ever wished to hear was eventually brought to life as part of a project developed by MIT engineers. Using deepfake technology to construct a news broadcast in which a digitally reconstructed Nixon delivered bad news was no easy task. Still, it achieved the intent of illustrating to the public the dangers of fake news. Nixon begins his speech by saying, quote, Fate has ordained that the men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. These brave men, Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin, know that there is no hope for their recovery, but they also know there is hope for mankind in their sacrifice. These two men are laying down their lives in mankind's most noble goal, the search for truth and understanding. They will be mourned by their families and friends. They will be mourned by their nation. They will be mourned by the people of the world. They will be mourned by a Mother Earth that dared send two of her sons into the unknown. In their exploration, they stirred the people of the world to feel as one. In their sacrifice, they bind more tightly the Brotherhood of Man. As tension rises and Nixon's speech ends, Sapphire's masterfully constructed words compare the two deceased astronauts with the ancient Greek heroes and other mythological warriors, concluding, quote, In ancient days, men looked at stars and saw their heroes in the constellations. In modern times, we do much the same, but our heroes are epic men of flesh and blood. Others will follow and surely find their way home. Man's search will not be denied. But these men were the first, and they will remain the foremost in our hearts. For every human being who looks up at the moon in the nights to come will know that there is some corner of another world that is forever mankind. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below what you think of the speech written by William Sapphire for President Nixon.